Great to have you with us. I'm Joe Donlan. And I'm Erica Sargent. A day of revelations in the Highland Park Parade shooting. Prosecutors now saying the suspect confessed after he was taken into custody. Plus, we are now seeing the faces of all seven people who lost their lives in the attack, including a preschool teacher, a grandfather, and the parents of a little boy. We have live team coverage, including frightening new details of what the accused shooter did when he left the parade. We begin with CBS2 political investigator Dana Kosloff live in Highland Park. Dana, a lot of information coming out about the suspect's first court appearance today. Yeah, Erica, there definitely were a lot of new details that came out in that hearing, which lasted about 30 minutes or so this morning. For now, the 21-year-old suspect will remain behind bars. No bond issued for him, and prosecutors say they expect more charges will be filed in the coming month. Prosecutor, prosecutors also told the judge that he had planned the attack here for weeks, and they also said that he had contemplated another mass shooting later in the day, just a few hours after he allegedly open fire here. I don't want to get into specifics about what he said in the interview and what he didn't say in the interview or what he admitted to and not, but what investigative leads have thus turned up is that while he was driving and he located this celebration occurring in the Madison area, he contemplated another attack with the firearm he had in his car. A rifle that fires like a pistol found in 21-year-old Robert Bobby Cremo's car six hours after prosecutors say he opened fire on the Highland Park parade crowd from a rooftop. In the car with him when arrested, 60 rounds. I can't speak to why he decided to come back from Madison. Um, there are indications that uh, he didn't put enough planning forward to commit another attack. Now we will never know for certain uh, what stopped him, but I am thankful that no innocent lives were taken from our city. That disturbing detail, just one bit of new information to come out at Cremo's morning bond hearing. He attended virtually in what appeared to be the same clothes he was wearing when he was taken into custody. And Lake County State's Attorney Eric Reinhardt says once at the Highland Park Police Department, he began talking. Well, his statement was voluntary. Uh, he was uh, questioned in the Highland Park Police Department. Uh, he was uh, read his Miranda warnings, offered attorneys, etc. Uh, he went into details about what he had done. Prosecutors told Judge Theodore Piconiak Cremo planned the attack for weeks, that he dressed in women's clothing and put on makeup to disguise himself and hide his facial tattoos because he knew people would recognize him. They say a witness saw him on that Highland Park roof with a gun and saw a gun flash. All of the shooting was done on the roof. And they say they video of the Smith & Wesson AR-15 type rifle used in the shooting falling out of Cremo's bag as he was leaving the scene with the fleeing crowd. The rifle used in the shooting was recovered on the ground. That's the object that he dropped. We're still looking to speak to the witness who saw him drop an object wrapped in a red blanket or red cloth. In all, investigators say they found 83 bullet casings on the roof of that building, which, again, is just a few blocks from here. Now, Cremo was supposed to be represented by a private defense attorney, but in court virtually this morning, that defense attorney told the judge he realized late last night he had a personal conflict of interest. So for now, Cremo is being represented by a public defender. I'm live in Highland Park. Dana Kozlov, CBS2 News. All right, Dana, thank you.